many of the diseases that we're working with in our dogs and our cats are, for all intents and purposes, exactly the same diseases that we're seeing in people. And when that's the case, we can really align what we're doing in our companion animals with what we want to do in people as well, so that the studies that we're doing can really benefit both animals and people. And there's a lot more efficiency, there's a lot more data gathered that can actually help all species. The annual cost of treating persistent or chronic pain conditions in the United States is well over $635 billion annually, which is more than the combined costs for the treatment of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Yet despite the billions of dollars spent each year on pain research, there's been a failure to translate basic pain research into new therapeutics for pain control in people. And so the thought is if we are doing some of those studies in our companion animals that have the diseases that are most similar, that we will be able to weed out some of those failures and have more successes. Unlike in rodents, where we need to model pain, we need to set up a situation that reminds us of pain in some sort of human disease, companion animals actually have pain. They have it as part of their life. Fluffy and Rover get arthritis and cancer, and one can study pain within those syndromes. And this, of course, is very relevant to the human situation, because as far as we can tell, there's really no difference with arthritic pain in dogs versus arthritic pain in humans, or cancer pain in cats versus cancer pain in humans. To the extent to which you can study pain within an existing painful syndrome, this is greatly preferable to trying to do the sort of pain modeling that we're used to doing in rodents. The sponsors of studies that are moving to human health indications are more and more wanting to consider studying things in companion animals because it is, does seem to be more clinically relevant than some of the, the laboratory models. Even in, within the biomedical community, it's still not intuitive that the diseases that we see in our pets are the same diseases that we see in many cases in people. And we're all working to the same goal in that we are looking for better ways to manage chronic pain in our patients. It's just their patients have two legs and mine generally have four. These multidisciplinary approaches are catching on. And I think fundamentally, because it makes sense, it adds crucial pieces of information that help facilitate the development of analgesics for use in humans and, along the way, improve the management of pain in animals.